Oh, yes. I think it was 1958. We honored Desi and Lucy. And that night had a lot of laughs and a lot of fun and a lot of pathos. The master ceremonies that night was not MB. It was Art Linkletter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a most wonderful guy, Art Linkletter. It was at the Hilton Hotel, and it was one of the biggest ones I've ever been to with the most important people. And they had a dais of at least 20 to 25 people. Eddie Cantor had a program years ago, and on the show featured as one of his cohorts was the very wonderful comedian, and we, he was known as Park Your Carcass. Park Your Carcass, whose right name was Harry Einstein, was a great member of the Friars Club out here. He was an unbelievable wit. I mean, whereas everybody needed writers, he never needed anything. He just did it himself. He wasn't feeling very well. He had a little trouble with his ticket, with his heart. And he had lost some of his luster and had not been working very much. And on this particular night, he was making his big comeback. I want you to meet a great guy and a fine friar, Harry Einstein. Park your carcass. He did a routine about the Friars Club, which was the most hilarious routine I have ever stolen. I'm not ever heard, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, he actually was the hit of the show. But you must not think that the Friars Club is an easy club to get into. <laughs> Quite to the contrary, it is most difficult. Before a prospective candidate has even issued an application, he must first satisfy us, beyond any question of a doubt, that he is either a resident or a non-resident of the state of California. He was up there knocking him dead. And he did about a monologue that lasted 10 minutes. Under normal circumstances, it might have lasted six minutes, but the laughs were so great, so impossible to believe, that as a result, it just stretched. He then must be proposed by and then vouched for by at least two men who are listed in the phone book. Ed Wynn was sitting on my right and he said, oh, he's so brilliant. And I turned my head around to him that way and I said, you know, he writes all his own material. I was so proud of it. He got a standing ovation while he was standing up and bowing said, thank you, thank you, and they were cheering. He walked back to the applause, sat down next to Milton Berle, and then suddenly put his head over on Milton Berle's lap and shut his eyes and apparently slumped down. And everybody stopped laughing and applauding because he had apparently fainted, or worse. And then all of a sudden there was a hush. And as I turned back to the stage, there he was with his head on the table. And um, I can never forget that, you know. I said, ladies and gentlemen, we have a little medical accident here for the moment. We wonder if anybody happens to have uh, any um, nitro, nitro tablets, which are to pick up the heart. Well, the surprise of my life, big producers, writers, and stars came forward with vials of, uh, apparently half the people in the room had heart problems. And I reached into his pocket to get the, the little pillbox of nitroglycerin, and when I tried to put it in his mouth, his teeth were clenched, I couldn't open his mouth. Everybody was frozen in the room. I, the drama is, is unbelievable, because they knew what was happening. And I tried to get Lucy to unleash her fingers from that table to come back. And uh, I couldn't get her. I couldn't, I couldn't move her hands. It was quite a, quite, it, it just was a deadening blow to all of us. And uh, that's when Milton Berle said to me, get up and sing a song fast. Tony, get up, stall, do something to get their mind off it. Do something, do, sing a song, sing a song. He says, all right, Tony Martin quickly, wasn't his fault. 
was improv, ad lib. He got up and sang, There's no, There's no tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, well, I, I was so upset I grabbed him by his pants underneath the table. I said, Wrong, sing another. Now get the picture. We've just lost Park Your Carcass, and he's singing, There's No Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, there were probably a couple of, of sympathetic heart attacks when there's no tomorrow rang out. And then everybody just sat. A few people left, but there were about a thousand people in the room. Everybody wanted to know what the outcome was. And Parky's wife went up to the day as she sat at the very end, and when she saw the five doctors leave with their sleeves rolled up, very glum, she knew, and oh God, she let out a screech. I think he was a heart doctor, and he came and he opened him up, and the fire department came, and they tried everything. And um, you know, the realization finally came, you know. I said, Desi, uh, we might as well call this evening finished, but there is one important piece of business we have to do, and that is you have to get the award for you and Lucy, the gold heart, and I handed it to him. And he got up and he said, uh, 10 minutes ago, this would be one of the most important moments of my life and one of the most memorable awards we've ever had. Now, it doesn't mean a goddamn thing.